Terima kasih Mbak Laras. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bapak Ibu harus semangat karena menjelang makan siang nggak boleh kendor. Telah hadir bersama kita, Alhamdulillah. Udah tahu dari mana beliau? Fujitsu. Asalnya kira-kira narasumber kita hari ini dari Jepang. Betul, telah hadir bersama kita Tatsuya Kawaharasang. Begitu ceritanya. Oh, Genki Desuka? Oh, Genki Desu. Telah hadir juga Pak Yofi, jadi nanti kalau Bapak Ibu yang ingin bertanya nggak perlu khawatir Akan ditranslasi oleh Pak Yofi Wahyu Diono dari Fujitsu Indonesia Oke, okay, uh, Tatsuya Kawahara-san, you have 15 minutes to present 15, yes, please Tema yang akan beliau sampaikan, uh, bisa Bapak Ibu simak juga di gg.gg simposium 2018 Selamat pagi, uh, ohayou gozaimasu. Nama saya Kawahara uh, dari Fujitsu. Uh, saya uh, sekarang uh, tinggal di Jakarta dua tahun, tapi uh, bahasanya sedikit. Jadi uh, hari ini translate uh, dari Jepang, uh, bahasa Jepang ke uh, bahasa Indonesia. え、それではえ、発表の方を始めたいと思います。いや、え、ちょっと頑張ります。え、私はあのパブリックセクター、あの、教育市場も担当してます、川原と申します。え、名前、ディア川原、ディアアドラハンドルダリーパブリックセクター
Ya, uh, ini adalah tentang uh, yang handle uh, pegawai kue yang ada di Fujitsu. Ya, ini adalah uh, di Asia itu ada sekitar 17.000 orang yang uh, bekerja di Fujitsu. Next please. Hai, eh Asia wa desu ne, ano kak kuni ni kyote o motte imasu ga Singapore ga ma chukaku no head quarter to natte imasu. Ya, inilah berapa uh, beberapa uh, anak perusahaan dari Fujitsu yang ada di uh, Asia dan ada headquarternya di Singapore. Next please. Di ano kocira no Indonesia dewa PT Fujitsu Indonesia to yu kaisa de yaku 260 nin ga eh hataraitte orimasu. Ya, ini adalah sedikit penjelasan tentang Fujitsu Indonesia. Uh, ada uh, Fujit PT Fujitsu Indonesia yang berada di Wisma Kea Jalan Sudirman dan pegawainya sekitar 260 orang. Next please. Hai. Eto kocira no supporting learning journey ということで、eh, 教育分野に関しては富士通はあの幼稚園からまたお年寄りまでまあ様々な場面で、eh, 学んでいく環境を IT で提供しています。Ya inilah sekitar uh, gambaran bahwa Fujitsu itu uh, mensupport uh, dari dari uh, dari uh, dari segi sistem dari uh, anak-anak atau dari TK sampai uh, sudah uh, tua gitu. Eh solution ni kan sete sekosi eh kacdo o hanashita shite itadakimasu. Ya, uh, solusi yang ada di Jepang itu mengenai tentang edukasi itu adalah sangat banyak, tapi dari 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 sebanyak itu ada beberapa yang belum siap untuk di uh, di share ke global gitu. Dan ini adalah beberapa solusi-solusi yang kita punya yang siap untuk uh, dijual ke global market. Tapi hari ini kita akan fokus di tiga uh, solusi yang sudah diwarnakan merah ini. Next please. はい、えー、それではちょっと最初にラーニングレポジトリというシステムに関してビデオを見ていただこうと思いますのでお願いいたします。いや、あ、untuk pertama-tama kita akan mencoba memperkenalkan learning repository system solution dan kita sudah siapkan videonya tolong diputar dan dilihat terlebih dahulu. development of information technology has revolutionized the way we teach our children. More than ever, students in the 21st century require a greater range of skills, particularly in regards to utilizing information in an ICT-driven world, defining and resolving issues in a globalized society, and pursuing meaningful collaboration. School-based education needs to change in order to meet these needs. ICT has become an indispensable communication tool that schools can use to add a visual element to individual ideas and encourage a more collaborative approach among students to teach each other and learn together. The acceleration of using ICT in the classroom is starting to be featured in public education policies in Japan and various countries. Fujitsu has supplied the education sector in Japan with computers and software packages since the 1980s, and it is the leading vendor in Japan for providing a total ICT environment. In recent years, Fujitsu has been closely involved in a number of national projects. Based on its technical expertise, Fujitsu is providing tablets to over 350 local councils throughout Japan. Fujitsu Learning Repository is an education tool designed to enhance learning and education outcomes. We developed it through years of experience in the education sector, including extensive consultation with teachers and education experts. Fujitsu Learning Repository offers two key benefits. One, it is a simple, easy-to-use classroom support tool that does not require ICT expertise. Two, it progressively stores learning data for individual students. The accumulated data can be used to identify the strengths and weaknesses of each student. 
Teachers can then use this information to develop a more flexible learning program tailored to each student. This system also allows teachers to store and share their experiences and expertise, thereby enhancing the overall quality of school education while promoting ICT-based learning in a classroom setting. Here are some classroom activities you can carry out with our system. Use teaching materials prepared by the teacher. Have two-way discussions involving the teacher and students. Now, let's look at a real-life classroom situation. Simply drag and drop pre-prepared materials into the system. The teacher unlocks the file to allow students to access the content. The content is displayed in each student's scheduling box. Tap to open and write with the pen tool. Submit finished work. The teacher shows the submissions inbox on a monitor and shares students' ideas in the class. With stored data, students can view their own personal learning curves. Teachers can also share materials with each other. In this manner, student records and teaching materials stored in the system benefit the teacher and students directly. Over time, this material creates an invaluable wealth of data for schools and parents that can be used to enhance educational standards across the entire region. Fujitsu Learning Repository supports a future in which a richer educational experience can be achieved. Fujitsu works with everyone involved in education in order to create a future that enables students to further develop their potential. Fujitsu, shaping tomorrow. Hi, uh, the presentation of the presentation. Yeah, uh, it was one of the products of our and maybe from the explanation Berikutnya kita akan coba kembali ke material uh, presentasinya. はい、え、今ちょっとあのビデオにありましたが、こちらのソリューションは、え、教師と生徒の間で、え、教材を共有して、え、クラスを活性化していくようなアプリケーションになります。Ya, uh, seperti yang tadi dijelaskan di video, jadi uh, sistem ini adalah satu sistem platform yang bisa uh, ber membuat uh, bisa membuat interaksi antara guru dan siswa di dalam suatu uh, sistem. Next please. え、富士通はですね、あのトライアルとしてジャカルタのえ、エスマントジュプルンパと高校の方でこちらのトライアルをやっていました。Ya, uh, dan sistem ini berserta dengan tablet dari Fujitsu sudah uh, pernah kita uji cobakan di SMA Negeri 74 Jakarta. はい、え、ま、Ya, uh, dari uh, dari uji coba ini kita mendapatkan uh, uh, komentar dari kepala sekolah SMA 74 bahwa uh, kelas itu berjalan menjadi lebih menarik dan kelas itu bisa lebih interaktif dan murid-murid juga nggak ada yang ngantuk dan di dalam fitur ini kan juga ada suatu uh, tools ya untuk melakukan pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang bisa diakses oleh uh, guru dan dari situ murid-murid uh, yang selama ini tidak terlalu aktif bertanya dan bisa melakukan suatu pertanyaan dan bisa menjadi lebih aktif. Nihon demo koita no jigyo no nakade IT o tsukau tu no ga ima bakuhatsu teki ni hirogatte imasu no de 
まあ、インドネシアでも日本のこういったノウハウが活用できると大変ありがたいなと思っています。いや、di Jepang ini sekarang juga dari sekolah-sekolah SD SMP SMA juga banyak yang sudah mencoba mengimplementasikan cara belajar seperti ini dan seperti apa yang dilakukan di Jepang mungkin Indonesia juga bisa dicontoh untuk di kelas-kelasnya. Next please. Atau こちらはミャンマーの事例を少しお話しさせていただきたいと思います。Berikutnya adalah contoh pada di Myanmar. えー、ミャンこちらはミャンマーの日本人学校の生徒さんを、えー、ターゲットにした、えー、実証になっています、えー、日本の,あの生徒がミャンマーにもいるんですが日本と同じような教育環境ではなくてなかなか、えー、より良い質の、えー、授業を受けることができないという課題がありましたいや、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、Apa, siswa-siswa ya, itu kan emang kebanyakan dari orang Jepang gitu ya mereka di, pada saat di Myanmar tidak bisa uh, ada ada suatu PR yang tidak bisa menerima atau mendapatkan suatu pelajaran yang uh, atau apa ya informan yang lebih baik yang baik sama seperti di, di Jepang. Ini yang saya sampaikan Learning Repository itu aplikasi yang digunakan oleh Indonesia dan Myanmar untuk menghubungkan guru dan siswa di Indonesia dan Myanmar. ただ、まああのにあの、同じ環境、同じような教育水準の授業を受けさせることができるということを確認しています。いや、ダリシステムの様、エニジュクタビサブルコラルボラシア、カロニチョントニア、ダラ、クラス、ディジャパン、ダディミアマリトディアブルインタラクシー。ジェディ、ディジャパン、ダディミアマリトディアブルインタラクシー。ジェディ、ディジャパン、ダディミアマリトディアブルインドネシアもジャカルタやスラバヤとか、まあ、マカスラのような大きな都市とあとはまあ地方本当の地方でなかなかあの同じようなレベルの授業を受けられないということに関しては、まあ、こういった IT を使うことで、えー、少しでも解決できるんじゃないかなというふうに考えていますいや、でインドネシアは非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に広くて非常に Dan di kota-kota lainnya juga banyak tempat yang belum bisa mendapatkan servis pendidikan yang sama seperti yang ada di Jakarta. Dengan sistem ini mungkin yang ada di luar-luar kota pelosokan sana juga juga bisa mendapatkan apa mendapatkan level pendidikan yang sama seperti yang ada di Jakarta. Jadi no, tadi no jadi tobas temu lah deh. Ya, next untuk yang study case di Thailand mungkin kita lewatkan saja langsung ke slide berikutnya. Hai, eh, next no, ano student portfolio to system mau coto gue showcase したいと思います。Ya, berikutnya ini adalah satu sistem yang lain dari yang tadi, namanya adalah student portfolio portfolio system. これはあの大学を主なターゲットにしていますが、大学の中にはいろ生徒に関するいろんな情報があります。それをまあ統合的に見て、えー、生徒のために、えー、役立つ情報をまあ共有するために、えー、導入しています。いや、これは一つの例えが非常に適切に実行できるようにしてほしいです。なぜなら、システムがインフォーマシーが多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報が多くて、情報Buatkan satu platform yang bisa menampung semua informasi yang ada di universitas tersebut. Jadi, ano video no ho, coto, nengai shimas. Oke, untuk lebih lanjutnya mungkin bisa melihat kita punya videonya tentang sistem ini. Tolong diputarkan videonya. Video yang ketiga, pak. To help produce graduates who contribute to society through a variety of knowledge and experiences. Dealing with students from diverse backgrounds, universities must tailor their approach to suit the particular preferences of individuals. However, it is impossible to provide effective support when a student's information is managed separately by many departments. 
Fujitsu Student Portfolio System provides student-centric services and encourages efficient information sharing among departments, thereby offering multifaceted support for individuals. Three key features of the Student Portfolio System are that it integrates and graphically displays student information, it enables unified support by all faculty staff, and it assists with personal growth through communication. The Student Portfolio System is a one-stop interface for faculty staff that also allows students and their parents to access information on academic performance and activities, as well as view advice and recommendations offered by university staff. Based on the wide-ranging information in the database, including student details and counseling records, staff from relevant departments can provide timely support to help students perform at their best. The system enables students to set their career and learning goals and allows faculty staff to continually offer advice and guidance to help meet those objectives. In this way, the system ensures that each student receives helpful, ongoing support from all involved staff during their time at university. As shown, by sharing a wide range of information on students' circumstances with all relevant staff, the university can identify individual student issues at an early stage and work to solve them and improve each student's on-campus experience. Fujitsu aims to create a future society in which people who wish to learn can realize their full potential by collaborating with all those engaged in providing education. Hi, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. yang sebelumnya Pak sebelumnya lagi lagi Pak あの今ご紹介した通電とポートフォリオは各生徒の情報を統合的に見ることができますまあこのようなダッシュボードの形で生徒が今どんな状況なのかっていうのをあの教員であるとか皆さんで共有して、えー分析して、それを進路,進路指導とかに、まあ、生かしていくということを日本ではやっております。Yeah. Uh, ini adalah uh, kalau dari penjelasan sistemnya tadi mungkin sudah sesuai dengan yang di video. Jadi ini adalah contoh plat, uh, dashboardnya. Dashboardnya ini menampilkan semua informasi tentang uh, uh, mahasiswa atau mahasiswi tersebut dari segi uh, nilai, uh, dari segi absensi dan macam-macam. Jadi sehingga kalau terjadi sesuatu atau ada masalah dari pihak uh, universitas atau pihak sekolah bisa melihat uh, bahwa ada keanehan dari uh, student tersebut sehingga bisa memberikan advice atau bisa memberikan masukan atau dipanggil seperti itu sehingga uh, bisa memperbaiki lagi dari prestasi uh, murid uh, tersebut. Hai, ano, tsugi no page ni itte kudasai. Ya, next mas. はい、あの最後の紹介になります。こちらのフィスダムというあのプラットフォームになります。いや、ini adalah solusi atau sistem terakhir yang kita mau perkenalkan pada hari ini. ini adalah namanya fisdam。これはあの最近日本でも広がってきている動きなんですが、教えたい人と学びたい人をつなぐようなプラットフォームというのが今日本では構築されています。Ya, uh, jadi ini adalah satu platform tentang digital learning. Jadi kita mengumpulkan atau menyiapkan platform bagi orang yang ingin mem, uh, ingin yang mengajar dan juga bagi orang yang ingin mendapatkan uh, pengajaran atau informasi gitu. Ano, こちらはですね、二つの方法がありますが、あの open online ということで。あの皆さんあの世界中の皆さんに公開するパターンともしくは企業とかある団体向けに閉じたネットワークで、えー、行うパターンと2つ日本ではあります。Yeah, uh, di Jepang itu ada dua, uh, dua cara untuk uh, 
Tisdam ini yang pertama adalah untuk open online yaitu adalah pada seluruh ya kita akses lewat internet jadi bisa diakses oleh uh, seluruh orang yang ada di dunia ini atau uh, kita bisa uh, close uh, sehingga jadi private online gitu ini cocok untuk kalau misalkan bagi uh, universitas atau buat uh, murid-murid atau orang yang ada di sekolah tersebut atau buat uh, suatu perusahaan seperti itu こちらもちょっとビデオをご覧いただきますのでビデオお願いします。いや、え、ini Japanese universities in Japan are now facing the problem of securing the number of applicants for enrollment who are decreasing due to the declining birth rate. On the other hand, training of young talent who can proactively learn, think, and take action is required, and there is also a need for a new approach to learning in the field of education. To face these challenges, the technology of ICT improves the interface between the students and the teachers to help them choose career paths which meet their individual needs and also help the teachers design curriculum. Fujitsu Bunkyo Solution Digital Learning can offer full-scale courses equivalent to university lectures as an online learning environment that allows you to learn anytime, anywhere with multiple devices. First, we would like to take you through some of the features of FISDA MOOC service, which can deliver courses extensively outside the university using the Internet. Mutual scoring report function that realizes collaborative learning among students and discussion board function to support active learning are standard equipped. These will support collaborative learning where students mutually learn from each other. Kanazawa University is known for its active use of ICT within the field of education. Aspire to realize the community's potential for the future and accessible education. They began offering MOOC courses using a JMOOC approved platform, Fujitsu's FISDEM MOOC service. その意味で第一弾の講座でありますテーマの課題に取り組んでいただきたいと考え、ムークで発信しました。海外の受講者は非常に熱心で講座終了後に実際にノートでスタディツアーやワークショップも参加されました。ムークを入り口としたハンテン学習の実践につなげることができたと思っ
Fujitsu Jane's Foundation is an educational institution founded and operated by Fujitsu Limited as part of its social contributions to the international community, which has introduced this digital learning into their program. The mission of Fujitsu James Foundation is to contribute to form a new community through human resource development and knowledge co-creation in the Asia-Pacific region. To drive this mission forward, it developed an international program, Global Leaders for Innovation and Knowledge, based on the vision of Dr. Ikujiro Nonaka, a professor emeritus of Hitotsubashi University and the Global Authority in Knowledge Creation Theory. The program is designed to nurture the innovative leaders who can lead the world through studying management theory, liberal arts, and practice. フリックの醍醐味はアジア太平洋地域から集まった様々な業種、業務経験を持つ人たちが3.5カニスタンという短期間に4カ国を回り、イノベーションが起きた現場に身を置く。あるいはイノベーション実際に起こしたリーダーと対話しながら、より良い未来を作るための英語で自己学習可能なフィズダムによる事前学習講座を提供することにしました。グリックで学ぶに必要な最低限な基礎知識と自身の課題設定等について事前に討議することによってプログラム初日から従来講義だった時間をワークショップに充てるなど目的に
Nanti videonya bisa kita dapatkan Pak Yofi atau oke. Okay. Baik, oh sudah ada di YouTube. Jadi Bapak Ibu yang ingin tahu lebih jauh dan saya rasa sudah cukup jelas di videonya tadi ada beberapa uh, layanan dari Fujitsu terkait uh, pembelajaran ada Fisdom, kemudian ada Student Portfolio System dan ada uh, terkait Learning Repository. Mohon maaf tidak ada sesi pertanyaan karena waktu uh, dan untuk dan untuk uh, menghargai kehadiran Kawaharasang kita ada souvenir yang akan disampaikan oleh Pak Bambang Warsita. Kami mohon dengan hormat Pak Bambang memberikan souvenirnya. Beri aplaus sekali lagi untuk Kawaharasan, Tatsura Kawaharasan dari Fujitsu Indonesia. Pak Yofi, terima kasih banyak. Pak Bambang, terima kasih. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, ada satu sesi terakhir sebelum kita break makan siang. Arigato gozaimas, Kawaharasan. Uh, ini akan sangat menarik karena ada satu keajaiban yang akan diberikan Google dan Aser Indonesia. Sebelum membuka sesi, kita persilakan terlebih dahulu. Narasumber kita ada dua. Sambil menunggu kedua narasumber, kita punya challenge untuk Bapak Ibu. Kalau biasanya Bapak Ibu yang diwajibkan bertanya, nanti di akhir sesi akan ada tiga pertanyaan untuk Bapak Ibu dari panelis kita. Tapi ada satu tantangan yang harus Bapak Ibu lakukan sejak awal, sebelum presentasi dimulai. Kita nih PTP, harapannya, mimpinya bukan sekedar menyelesaikan soal masalah pendidikan atau pembelajaran yang ada. Tapi bagaimana kita create future, kita bagaimana menciptakan masa depan kita. Tantangannya adalah, Bapak Ibu tuliskan, dituliskan saya terlebih dahulu dimanapun mau di laptop, apa di handphonenya atau di kertas yang ada di meja Bapak Ibu. Perubahan apa yang akan Bapak Ibu lakukan untuk memecahkan masalah belajar yang Bapak Ibu temui di institusi, di instansi tempat Bapak Ibu bekerja sekarang atau lebih luas lagi di region Bapak Ibu berada. Jadi perubahan apa yang akan Bapak Ibu buat dalam hal ini terkait proses pembelajaran dengan segala aspeknya di institusi atau instansi lebih luas lagi di daerah Bapak Ibu berasal. Nanti akan ada satu hadiah luar biasa dipersembahkan oleh Google Indonesia dan untuk itu sambil menunggu lagi kita akan kedatangan Mr. Manik Dev Joli biasa dipanggil dengan Joli saja dan ada Pak Tony Priyono dari Aser Indonesia sambil menunggu oke okay, Pak Joli jadi siap Bapak Ibu silahkan mulai tuliskan dulu ini hadiahnya nggak main-main luar biasa banget belum ada di uh, toko manapun itu bocorannya jadi ini Tantangan yang saya rasa akan terbayar dengan Bapak Ibu memberikan idenya Wajah pembelajaran yang akan Bapak Ibu ciptakan Untuk memecahkan masalah belajar yang ada di institusi, di instansi maupun di daerah Bapak Ibu berasa Baik, kita sambil tunggu mohon perkenannya Bapak Ibu bisa minum dulu, mohon maaf tidak ada coffee break ya Mbak Meta ya Nanti langsung makan siang aja biar enggak terlalu gemuk nanti pulang dari simposium ya. Kita takut aja Bapak Ibu nanti enggak dikenalkan sama keluarga. Ini serius ya Bapak Ibu tantangannya, benar-benar Bapak Ibu akan amazed sama hadiah yang akan diberikan bagi satu orang, hanya satu orang, yang nanti diberi kesempatan bagaimana caranya itu nanti rahasia. Akan ada orang yang akan diberi kesempatan untuk uh, mempresentasikan gagasannya, nggak usah panjang-panjang, satu menit saja. Lebih bagus lagi kalau dalam bahasa Inggris. Mau bahasa Jepang juga boleh. ya. Asal jangan bahasa daerah. Wajah pembelajaran akan Bapak Ibu ciptakan di masa depan dalam memecahkan masalah belajar yang ada di institusi, instansi. Jadi berangkat dari masalah dulu. Saya ada masalah ini dan 
mimpi saya kita kan katanya orang desainer ya pak jadi gimana kita merancang itu semua kira-kira berapa lagi pak Bowo mungkin uh, Mr. Jolly bisa hadir dulu di stage sambil berproses kemudian ada Tony Priono dari Eser Indonesia atau Mbak Meta mau disemarakkan dulu nggak usah ya izin ya Bapak Ibu duduk kembali silahkan diminum Bapak Ibu <laughs> kenapa Pak kenapa silahkan dituliskan nanti kesempatannya bagaimana itu di akhir sesi siapa yang bisa present saya kenalan dulu deh nih Mr. Mang Dev Jolly ini dari mana kira-kira ada yang tahu dari mana aca-aca hmm, ya Oke, okay, beliau, oh tapi nggak dikasih tahu tempat lahirnya, beliau lahir pada 12 Desember 1981, posisinya sekarang adalah South East Asia Head Account Management Google Asia Pacific. Kemudian ada Pak Tony Priono dari Acer Indonesia. Sabar ya Bapak Ibu, untuk satu benda yang saya rahasiakan itu, ini worth it sekali. Ini enggak ada musiknya, Mbak Meta. Ya Pak, Bu, tulis Bu. Mimpinya Bapak Ibu memecahkan masalah belajar yang ada di instansi Bapak Ibu tuh apa? Kalau bisa teknis jawabannya silakan. Dalam bahasa Inggris ya Bapak Ibu. Three, two. Ya, kita beri tepuk tangan untuk memulai sesinya. Kita please welcome Mr. Manik Dev Jolly. That's okay, Jolly. Please welcome. You're welcome. Where is Mr. Tony? Sit. Okay, ini dia Pak Tony Priono. Dari Acer Indonesia, silakan. Oke, okay, welcome Jolly. Selamat datang Pak Tony. This is our personal designer and technology, and you will present about Google G Suite for Education. Yeah. It's your time for 10 minutes. Is okay? Sorry? 10 minutes. I do try. Okay, more or less. Please, Jolly. Hello, hello, my check. One, two, five. There is something wrong with the mic here. One, two, five. Because three and four are missing. They're 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 leaking. <laughs> it 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 was it was it was just a joke. It was just a joke. Uh, well, my name is Jolly, and I am the Southeast Asia head uh, for G Suite account management. Uh, so first of all, I just wanted to thank all of you to uh, invite me here. And I feel like I am just like a Bollywood movie star. You know, there are so many people sitting here. <laughs> I think I'm going to get an award here. <laughs> uh, okay. But uh, very, very quickly, I would be just uh, talking about how we should prepare our students for the coming future, for the coming workplace, right? Uh, but before uh, I can move forward with my presentation, which is the boring stuff, it's very boring, right? Presentations are very boring. I just want to do something which is very exciting. And as we see, as I see that there are so many educators sitting here, I just want to have a quiz, a test, a general knowledge test. 
So will everyone be okay with that? And the winner would get a cool um, Google embedded bottle. Um, the person who wins the test. Okay. It, it's like this. Okay? Yep. Everyone okay? Okay. Okay. So next slide, please. What is this? Okay, that was not the question. That was not the question. Uh, the question is, how much does a polar bear weighs? As in like the weight. How much does a polar bear weighs? Anyone? You can, you can tell me in grams, kilograms, pounds, anything. How much does a polar bear weighs? Berapa beratnya? Ayo. You, you, they can raise their hand? Yes, yes, okay, they can raise their hand. I will take the uh, I will I will take the mic. Uh, okay, okay. About half ton. Half a ton, half a ton. That's that's a good guess. By the way, you sh you cannot you know it's not necessary for you to be exact. You can give me a ballpark figure, right? Maybe 500 kilos to 600 kilos, something like that. Yeah, 450 Some kilos. One at the back? Okay. Yeah. One by one, one by okay. one. About 450 kilo. That's very close. That's very close. Any? Okay. I think the bear, the way is, the bear, I think the way they're not dead me, right? It's, <laughs> it's almost uh, 450 kilos, and you around 60 kilos, right? Okay, that's that's a nice guess, uh, but it was it was just a general knowledge game. It's not it's not that serious. Uh, can we just go to the next slide, please? No. no. no yeah. Enough, enough. One more. No. Yeah. yeah. So I think the polar bear weighs enough to break the ice. Do you get the joke? This these are the slides which typically I use uh, between my presentation and the audience. It helps me to gel well with the audience and just to break the ice. But I love your answer, so you get the bottle. You get. Okay, four hundred and fifty kilo. Okay. Okay, very good. Saudara ini saudara, makanya tahu beratnya ya. Your presentation is very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, can we have a round of applause, please? Ya, Pak Arnadi, terima kasih. Oh, man. <laughs> See? Magic, magic. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this was this was just a joke. This was just for fun purposes. But on a very serious note, at the end of my presentation, uh, we will have some questions, and those questions would be based on something which I will present, something which my friend Tony will present, and uh, the person who gives the best answer or answers will get a grand prize. And Tony, would you mind if I if I can just tell them what yes. the, what the grand prize is? I only uh, give them clue. Grand prize. Okay. It's very, very grand. Actually, I should tell them. Should you? Yes, yes, okay, because yes. that would that would be okay. more exciting for them. Yes, the please. grand prize here is the person who gives the maximum correct answers will get a Chromebook, a laptop. <laughs> you guys like it, right? Okay. Those questions would not be easy. There would be two set of questions. One would be from me, which would be very easy like these. And the, the other questions would be from Tony because he would be giving a Chromebook, so the questions would be very difficult. So please be very attentive and think and always wear your thinking hat. You know, keep on thinking. Okay. Now the next slide is just a video. Okay. And I will play this video again during the middle of my slide. Okay. It's a request from Google. It's it's a request from me that please watch this anything do not wear your thinking hat just look at this video for fun purposes as you watch movies maybe you watch Bollywood movies or Hollywood movies right so just watch this video as a movie it's just one minute and then I will move forward and we'll, we'll connect the dots can we play the video please thanks
that lava. Look at that smoke coming out of that. Pretend you're an airplane and fly over the, the tornado. That's the top of it. What do you see? It's either asteroid, meteorite. We're learning about DNA and genes, things that we can't see. And so the most exciting thing for me with the AR technology was that I could see kids get an aha moment that I couldn't get by just telling them about it. The minute I saw it pop up on the screen, it made me want to get up and walk to it. You actually get to turn around and look at things from all angles. So it gave us a nice perspective. See if you can figure out what that might be based on what you know about the respiratory system. I got to see where the alveoli branched off and I could look inside them and see how everything worked, which I never saw before, and it was really, really cool. Join the dots. Now I come to the serious part of my presentation. Um, so let's let's talk about. Uh, so so I ha I have been invited here to try to figure out what's the best way to educate students and to prepare them for. It. Just I just wanted to uh, figure out. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll tell you. And econ uh, our economy uh, has evolved big time in the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, just 20 years back, an economy or a workplace just included exchange of goods and services. Am I, am I right? You know, just exchange of goods and services. But now after globalization, with goods and services, there has been so many ideas and knowledge um, uh, ideas and knowledge, idea. knowledgeable things which are being shared between the countries, between the offices. So things are changing very fast, right? Can anyone tell me right now, because I can't tell, I do not have answer to this question, that what would be people like me doing in a company or in Uber's or Grab or Gojek's office? It's just a transportation app, right, which helps people to go from A to B. What would be people doing, doing there? What kind of work would they be doing? Any idea? I don't know. I don't know. So when principals, educators, teachers, they visit us, they visit Google Office, they ask this fundamental question, what should they be including in their education system for their students and prepare them for future jobs which do not even exist today? Right? Do you think that is something which is logical? I will, I'm 37 years old. 15 years back, 20 years back, when I was studying, Google did not even exist. And I'm working in Google. So I studied for something which was not even existing. That is something which we need to think about. Now I would request everyone to wear your thinking hat and think as educators what we can do right now to prepare students for the jobs and for the companies which do not even exist. Right? Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so now, now to think, now to think of what I have done, I have made very simple presentation and divided my presentation into three parts. The first is, let's understand how the, a workplace is evolving. You know, economies are evolving, but how workplaces are evolving. And then we will talk about how we should be preparing about the future. And then I would just give you a couple of case studies which would help you understand better of how we can prepare students better, right? Talking about evolution in workplace, I will not go very far, okay? And no need to speak, but with raise of hands, just let me know if you think I'm right or not. Okay, just raise of hands. I will not give you any examples which I have read somewhere. I will give you examples of, m of me myself. So I'll talk about my father. My father has worked in one organization, a pharmaceutical company based out of India for 20 years. My mother resigned last year in November working in an, in an insurance company in India after 35 years, first job, and resigned from there after 35 years. Before Google, I was working in Oracle for 10 years. My wife was working in Denso India, a car manufacturing company, for 12 years. And my child, who is six years old, he has changed his school three times. Three times. Can you just see the change? Does anyone now agree by the raise of hands that things are getting evolved? People are switching jobs pretty early. 
we are not married to an organization as my parents were so why raise of hands do you guys agree no, no no need to say anything just raise of hands do you guys agree that this is the trend which you guys are right now seeing presently being educators yes only two only five okay i think we should get some more swags at least for the hands okay 9 10 very good so this that's that's the that's the trend which we are seeing next slide please that's the trend which we are seeing and as per as per surveys and as per the intelligence what we get to know that every graduate or every person every student who is studying right now will on an average change 6 to 8 jobs once they get into the industry they would change 6 to 8 jobs on an average right and as if now they are studying for something to work in an organization which is not even present right now just 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 think about it right was tokopedia there 15 years back lazada was there uber grab gojek all the e-commerce companies was it were they there but there are students like me and like you who who are right now working in these kind of organization right so we are actually studying the students are actually studying right now and preparing themselves for the jobs and the companies which do not even exist and the math shows the survey shows at 60 60% as if now right can we go to the next slide please the based on one of the studies which MIT from US did um uh, uh they they figured out that so they interviewed and surveyed lot many business leaders okay and they asked them a question of what typically are the work done in an organization and this was the thing which was very shocking for me was very shocking so in an organization the work is evolved in a way that all the routine and manual jobs are going down are going down big time it's dipping down and all the non routine interpersonal and non routine analytical which needs more of problem solving and creativity is going up the ladder right so as as educators what we need to ask ourselves is that whether our education system preparing students for the jobs which are dipping down or for the jobs which are actually going up the ladder which are non routine interpersonal so i will just explain what non routine interpersonal is because it's a, it's it's english i also did not understand uh, i had to go through all the dictionaries to understand but what i understood was that non routine interpersonal jobs mean that every task in every job every instance in every job is different they need a person's ingenuity to do that job as machines involve evolve right they can do the routine work they can do the routine work very easy like punching you know earlier in my in my in my mother's office there was a person who was actually punching um, the papers there was a person who was standing there at the door to open the door but now we have automated doors right so these are just very small examples so the question which we need to ask to ourselves is whether we are preparing our students for the for the jobs which are dipping down or maybe for the jobs which are actually going up up the ladder right next slide please so now uh, when we know when we have got to know how our workplaces are getting evolved you know let's talk about how we should prepare our students for the future and for that next slide please and for that there was another survey which i want to show here which was done by economist group uh we asked thousands and thousands of business leaders it heads hr heads uh marketing heads all the cxos that what are the attributes which you think your employee should have to make your company successful they actually named a lot of attributes but the top 5 were problem solving team working communication critical thinking and creativity can anyone tell me in at least in our education system right now specifically in asia do we have books do we have chapters Uh, do we have projects which help to enhance these these kind of attributes i don't ha- i don't think so in my in my son's school also it's not like that but i don't care 
because what I believe is my own homeschooling. I try to bring these top five attributes in him by giving him some good examples or by giving him some good tasks which enhances this kind of attributes, uh, attributes for him. So the question again, which we need to ask, does our present education system include this? If not, then definitely action is required. Because this is something which where, where, where the world is going now. This is something where the world is going now. Uh, next slide, please. And we are already seeing this trend that people, students, parents, teachers, they are working on those five attributes which I showed you earlier, right? But how can I say that? How can I be so sure that the world is now trending towards that? And this is very close to me. So every year, Google actually organizes uh, a Google Science Fair uh, in which students apply from 90 different countries and create things based on their problem-solving activities. You will not believe, guys, and I, I request everyone to just listen to this. You will not believe one of these students have created a machine which can detect breast cancer and Ebola virus very early in the stages. Can you imagine? One of the guys have created a machine which can purify water at a very cost-effective rate. Water is a problem in the whole world nowadays. You know, we are depleting our earth big time, so water is a problem and is going to be a problem in the whole world. But some, one of the guys over here have invented a machine or created a machine which can purify water at a very low cost. Right. One person, you'll not believe this, and this, and I want to hug this, this, this student, actually invented a machine which can give voice to a mute person, to a person who cannot speak. You know, so, so just imagine you know, the kind of problem solving uh, capabilities these children have, right? Next slide, please. This is a slide of uh, a Singapore office. Uh, that's, that's our Singapore head, uh, headquarters. And all these girls together actually helped creating a super energy capacitator. You know, it's an energy storing device which is very cost effective and can store a lot many energy than, than a AAA battery. So that's what they did. They, 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 they also solved a problem, right? Next, next, next slide, please. So uh, with all the previous slides, what, what, I, what, I, what I want to tell is that there are so many things which we can learn from our past history. Uh, you know, we can change our education system. We can put attributes like problem solving and creativity into our education system, right? Uh, what, what I believe very strongly is that whatever you guys are trying to change in the education system can only be done with technology as if now nothing is impossible with the help of technology. So what I believe that technology is the last bit of the puzzle, which we have, right? So you should be using technology, okay? Now one question again, and I will give a swag or a gift to that person who gives me the right answer at a later, at a later stage. In the education system, can you let me know the three parties which are very, very important? When you are educating a child, Okay, in the education system of any country, the three parties which are the most important pillars of the education system. Can anyone name that? Please. Three pillars penting dalam apa sistem pendidikan kita silakan. What kind of gift will you give? Uh. One for, for one. Okay, tumbler. Okay, another tumbler. Thank you. Is it the same? Oh, this is this is this is something different. This is cool. Wow. So three pillars of education systems are, anyone? Okay, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, three parts, pillars, yeah, which is, thank you. I have, I, uh, I give the right answer. Uh, there are three pillars. Uh, government, society, and uh, parents. Thank you. Okay, so ma'am says government, society, and parents. Um, it's partially correct answer, 
Okay, if no one else give me the right answer, I will uh, give this to you. So parents is definitely a pillar. Government is a supporter. Government supports. Society also supports, right? Right? Anyone else who can just give me two more pillars? Just two more pillars. Yes! Three pillars, school, public, and teacher. School, public, and teachers. Okay, so um, sir mentioned school, family, and teachers. Well, I believe family, yes. I believe teachers, yes. So you already um, uh, named uh, parents, right? So sir has mentioned family and school, uh, family and teachers, family, school, and teachers. But someone is missing, everyone is missing the integral part, the most integral part. Maybe learning object, teacher and parent. So teachers and parents I understand, but what else? What exactly, what, what, will, pe what will people do without students, right? What will teachers and parents do without students, right? Yeah, superb, student, teachers and parents, no one, <laughs> no one named students, right? Okay, good job. Okay, so, so we know that the integral part of our education system, all other, all other things like governments and societies, they are supporting, but three pillars are students, teachers, and, and parents, right? So once these three pillars agree for a particular goal, and they agree to take the challenge, then they should definitely adopt a technology, which is the last bit of the puzzle, right, to change the education system. I am not saying that you should adopt a technology from A, B, or C. I am no one to comment on that. But what I can comment on that, uh, what I can comment on is that whatever technology or whatever thing you adopt, right, it should be based on a framework. And I am going to just talk about that framework very quickly and then my presentation would just run um, uh, quickly because I know that I am the only person who is standing between you and your lunch. So I'll just wrap up my presentation. Can we go to the next slide, please? So the framework, next, two, two tabs more. So the framework should be whatever you adopt, whatever technology you adopt, right? It should be sustainable, it should have equity, and it should have an impact. Now what does sustainability mean? Sustainability means that it should be simple, it should be flexible, and it should be affordable. Again, by the raise of hands, who can say yes that schools and universities always have budget problems? Always have budget problems in investing. Because my school, I have, uh, I know it, it has a budget problem. In fact, one of the surveys told, uh, uh, tell us that 40% of the schools globally have budget issues, right? So why not adopt something which is sustainable, which is cheap, which is flexible, which is simple, which also have equity, which means that every student can get access to that technology, right? And if not, then also can get loans at a very, sim at a very small interest rates. And then it should also have impact, like what you are planning to accomplish with whatever you are adopting, right? So that's the framework which we should be working on. Whatever, whatever technology or whatever things you adopt, I'm not saying again, it, go for A, B, or C. Whatever you do that, please work on this framework. It's very, very important. I use this framework with my son, and as of now, I have been successful. Can we move to the next slide, please? OK. Is anyone new to this slide? Anyone new to this slide? This is talking about an average span of a teenager, a student, a, a person, a student who is uh, studying in a school or a university. You know, an average span of a student is eight seconds, less than eight seconds. You know, it is lesser than the time I took to say this sentence. You'll not believe this, right? The thing is that we know about it. We know about it, but I'm not too sure why we choose to ignore. On an average, 
10 hours a day a student is on internet whether it's facebook it's booking a grab a go check it's whatsapp or it's buying something from lazadas of the world 10 hours a day which is 60 percent of the time they are awake when i was young i used to roll on in the mud right everyone everyone did that when we were young but as if now students are actually spending 60 percent of their awake time on internet so the question is can we adopt something or can we include something in the education system which helps students to study the way they live and this is the way they live 60 percent of the times on internet 60 percent of the time on internet so can we include something in our education system which is actually a technology or whatever which includes internet right and help them study more because that would be very very close to the way they live right am i am i going too fast or is it okay okay super okay next next slide please you know this is this is just a slide which i put for fun uh, you know uh, uh, you know you you can go home and ask your kids or 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 your students right that what are the top 10 coolest brands in this world uh, in the globe at least 70% or 80% of them would name these companies, right? Yeah, Netflix, GoPro, Google, YouTube, what else? Uh, PlayStation, uh, Xbox, right? My six-year kid named, named this, right? And all of these companies were not there when I was studying, all the 10 companies, right? It's just a, it's just a slide for fun. It's fun here, but you know these, these are the companies which are uh, getting those non-routine analytical jobs in this world now okay next slide please so now uh, when we know that uh, you know how the workplace is shaping how the economy is shaping what you should be considering when you are adopting a technology uh, and all I would like to give you an example of what we you, we use in Google I use for my six year old kid and then maybe you know it will help you to understand this thing better. Can we can we go to the next slide? Three clicks please. In Google we give the best of Google to the teachers and to students. Right? And as I told you in the beginning of my presentation I have a quiz from please be very very careful uh, in, on this slide because maximum of my questions are based on this slide, right? Yes, ma'am, you can click pictures and answer that. But yeah, so in Google, we actually give the best of Google which we have to teachers and to students. We have Google for Education, which, in, which is based on the platform of G Suite. We have Chromebooks, which Tony would be talking about a little later which is a specially designed laptop for students, which one of you today is going to be uh, gifted by Tony if you win the prize, if you answer all the questions. And then we also have some education programs which enhance creativity uh, within students, uh, education programs which are uh, based on science, and some education program which helps in developing the coding ability of a particular child. Can we go to the next slide, please? Years back it's called a Google classroom app which means that the three pillars students teachers and parents can come together on a single platform and work or do their homework from anywhere anytime any device. I think a couple of my colleagues, a couple of the presenters have already presented this earlier, but this is specifically from Google. We call it Google Classform, uh, Classroom. This Google Classroom was launched and developed after surveying thousands and thousands of teachers and students. So we asked teachers, we asked students and asked questions uh, about what's the gap between what, te what teachers make them study and what they understand. 
right? And based on the feedback, we launched this classroom app, which helps students, parents, and teachers to come on the same platform and collaborate better, right? Uh, next slide, please. Please. Now, this is an example of how uh, uh, two different students at a diff at a, in, in different parts of the world one sitting in Bali, one sitting in Jakarta, are working on the same document on a project Everest, okay, from any device. Again, this is a concept. It's okay to forget this slide, but please remember this philosophy of Google. It is very, very important for us to detach students to work on a single device. Right now, I remember when I was young and I had to submit a project, that project was kept in one of my computers in my school. Till the time I go to that computer, right, I was not able to complete my work, right? This still happens in our offices. If my manager asks me for some file, I just ask, I just tell him, I'm on my way, let me reach office, right? So I waste one hour in, 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 in a jam, uh, and the file is still in my laptop or my computer in, in the office. So this is a philosophy of detaching students of studying, creating assignments, and thinking about projects from anywhere and any device. So the Google Classroom helps students to do this and, 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 and follow our philosophy. Next slide, please. Now, this is just cosmetic things, you know. Uh, this is just a, a depiction of how teachers can actually annotate assignments and give it to um, students just on the go. She does not need to be in school to just write, a, write an assignment and then email them or give them a hard copy. She can use a Google Classroom app to give it to the students. And also, next slide, please. She can also share uh, things with parents and keep them up to date with children assignments, their report card day, their annual day. So that's very generic, but as of now, this was happening on a physical front, but now it is happening in a classroom app uh, front without asking people to travel and meet, but to increase productivity and problem solving and creativity within the students, which again links to to the philosophy of making students study the, the way they live. It's based on internet, right? So making, helping students study the way they live. Next slide, please. Okay, anyone knows about this ratio? Now I'm going to talk about the Chromebooks, which you guys are going to win as an award. Anyone knows about this ratio? Okay, so this is a, this is a ratio users in an organization or in a school versus the IT staff. I am 100% sure that that's not the ratio which every school and university, at least in Asia, has. You know, you have thousands and thousands of students, but we just have three or four IT staff, right? IT needs to scale. IT staff needs to scale. But it's very difficult to find IT people who stay in an organization for long, right? So based on this concept, what Google did. Next slide, please. We launched Chromebook. Chromebook is actually a laptop which you are going to get as an award after uh, answering the questions, right? It's specifically designed for students. It's lightweight. It's very durable. You can, I will show you a demo. I can throw, my, throw the laptop from here. Nothing will happen, right? It's very durable. And it's specifically designed for students. It's very secure, OK? And it boots up in less, less than 10 seconds, if you can see here. And it's, and it's very, very simple. As I told you, it's, it's very sustainable. And also, it is at a very, very low cost. But having said that, there are so many vendors in the market which gives these kind of things, you know, secure, low cost, very durable. But what's the benefit? The benefit is in the next slide. It's in the next slide. Next slide, please. The benefit is that you can control all the Chromebooks, whether it's 5,000 Chromebooks, it's 10,000 Chromebooks, 10,000 students, or 20,000 students across the globe by just one single admin console and by just one single person. That's the beauty of, beauty of it. It's based on the Chrome operating system, uh, the Chrome browser, 
the Chrome operating system. It has the platform of G Suite for education. It can be controlled by just one person, by just one single admin console, and can give access to different age and different sections of students. So for example, a student who is in the third year of the university, and, a and so there are 10 students in the third year of the university and 10 students in the first year of the university, you want only third year students to browse Facebook or internet, you can do that. They can do that and you can restrict the other 10. So that is something which you can do by just going with Chromebook. It does not require hundreds and hundreds of IT staff to maintain it. And the beauty of it is, as compared to the other vendors in the market, you do not have to buy hardware and then operating system license and then maybe their office licenses. Everything is bundled in it and you just have to spend one time for the lifetime, just once, that's all. Right. Uh, so that is what Chromebook is all about and Tony would be talking about it a little bit uh, in detail later. Next slide, please. And now I am going to play this video again, which I played in the beginning of our presentation. Can you play this video, please? Thanks. All right, who wants to see a volcano? Three, two, one. Wow. Look at that lava, look at that smoke coming out of that. Pretend you're an airplane and fly over the, the tornado. That's the top of it. What do you see? It's either asteroids, meteorites. We're learning about DNA and genes, things that we can't see. And so the most exciting thing for me with the AR technology was that I could see kids get an aha moment that I couldn't get by just telling them about it. The minute I saw it pop up on the screen, it made me want to get up and walk to it. You actually get to turn around and look at things from all angles. So it gave us a nice perspective. See if you can figure out what that might be based on what you know about the respiratory system. I got to see where the alveoli branched off and I could look inside them and see how everything worked, which I never saw before, and it was really, really cool. Okay, so thank you for watching this again. Well, now were you able to join the dots? Why did I show this video early in my presentation and, and why now? Early was just fun. But now I just want to tell you that this VR, virtual reality and augmented reality for students was actually created by Google specifically after interviewing thousands and thousands of teachers and students and we are trying to bridge in the gap. When, when I still, I still haven't seen an atom. I have not seen anything like a genes, you know, the, you know, my, my DNA. I haven't seen a volcano. I, I do not, I'm not in Bali. So I, I, I haven't seen a volcano. And this is something which we are actually bringing to the kids right now. Just imagine when we were young, we used to study A for apple, A as an apple. And there was a picture of apple in the book. Just imagine that you have not seen that apple in reality ever. Would you be able to relate to it? Obviously the answer is no. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to bridge in the gap by interviewing thousands of uh, teachers and students and we are helping with VR, AR, Google Classrooms and Chromebooks so that they can, so that we can bridge the gap between what teachers is making them understand and actually what they are understanding. Next slide please. Okay, this is just this. This is just a very uh, simple survey, uh, and this is very important. And I'm. This is my second last slide, and then there is a last video, and then we can break for our demo. Uh, this thing says that 71 percent, more than 70, yeah, 71 percent of people in any organization, whether it's a school or it's or it's a workplace, they are stressed about the technology which has been adopted. You know, they are able to adopt the technology, but not able to adapt to the technology. So just to remove that stress, Google gives you trainings, certifications, um, communities, and support so that if you at all decide to go with Google for your education system, we will provide you the complete backup, the complete support. You would be completely and fully trained. Next slide, please. 
This is my last slide, and then I will just run a video. Guys, one thing which I'm very sure that uh, whatever you choose uh, as a technology or as a tool to improve your education system for future, it's not an easy task. I know it's not an easy task, you know. Going back and changing anything from, from start till the end, it's not an easy task. So it's, it actually takes a leader to think about even changing the education system. And I, you know, I salute all of you, hats off to all of you guys who are thinking in, in, in this direction of changing the education system and preparing students for the future jobs which do not even exist. So thanks a lot, and I will end my presentation with a short video, uh, and then we, I will give it give it to Tony, and then we will have some, yeah, and then we will have some questions. So can we play the video in the next slide, please? Imagine the awesomest thing you can, like an automatic grilled cheese maker, or a time machine, or a time machine with an automatic grilled cheese maker. Now imagine who's going to invent it. Him? Oh. Glasses here? Whoever they are? Or maybe her? But how do kids like these become the types of people that do things like this? Maybe we should ask this guy. Knowledge is heavy. Sometimes it's a limit to, to have new ideas. That's the problem with the old schooling because they were teaching answers. I believe questions are probably more important today than the answers. Erno's cube is a question waiting to be answered. And when the right person finds the right question, something amazing happens. They start seeing the world as it truly is. Not a place to be memorized, but a place to be figured out, flipped, turned, twisted, and ultimately made better forever. Today, she may be an octopus, but help kids like her fall in love with problem solving, and they will embark on journeys to become scientists, artists, engineers, designers, inventors, or something no one's ever been before, but you can bet we're going to need. That's why moments like this, go, and this, and this, and especially this, are so important. Because there are companies to found, planets to walk on, time machines to invent, a future to be made amazing. We may not know what it's going to look like, but we know who's going to do it. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thank Next you. slide, please. Uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, you can just next slide, please. You can um, email it to edu-indonesia at google.com. That's edu. Yeah, you can just take a picture. Any questions regarding anything, the philosophy, what we have launched specifically for uh, education sector and for children just just let us know any ideas which you have you can just let us know and now I just want to uh, you know end my presentation uh, and invite Tony here from Acer who would give you an interesting demo of the Chromebooks which I spoke about you know it's durability maybe you may want to throw the <laughs> the Chromebook and he would be talking in Bahasa so uh, uh, I would not be able to understand, but if there are any questions, uh, you, Tony, I request you to just uh, translate it for me so that I can uh, give answers, okay? And after that, we have our quiz session, right? Okay. Okay. Welcome, Tony. Okay. Thank you, Jolie. Thank you for your time and explanation. Make applause for Jolie. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sebelumnya perkenalkan saya Tony, saya dari Acer Indonesia. Kami bekerja sama dengan Google untuk mengembangkan salah satu perangkat yang saat ini bisa dibilang paling banyak digunakan di seluruh dunia untuk di education. Jolie sudah memperkenalkan, sudah memberikan introduction tentang apa yang berada, apa yang bisa diberikan oleh Google untuk pendidikan. Acer kami memberikan perangkatnya. Saya akan berikan sedikit video untuk memberikan uh, pengenalan terhadap apakah Chromebook itu.
This is a computer. Dari perangkat tidak jauh berbeda This dengan the web. Facebook yang kita kenal. That's weird. Okay, so it's the web. There are no programs. So there's nothing to start up. Then how do I do stuff? There's no messy desktop. So no rolling hills of green. Can I use it anywhere? On a unicycle? My calendars, emails, documents. Everything can be saved to the web. That's crazy. So I could throw this thing into a river. And I won't lose my stuff? It doesn't need virus protection. What about annoying updates? Or patches? Or patches for the patches? So it gets better in real time. I wonder if people are ready for this. It's kind of a new thought. Oke, okay, itu introduction-nya dan ini adalah perangkatnya. Secara fisik tidak jauh berbeda dengan perangkat notebook yang biasa kita gunakan. Yang membedakan adalah apa yang ada di dalamnya. Ini memiliki sama, memiliki storage. Ini juga sama memiliki memori dan memiliki prosesor. Prosesor, storage, dan memori yang sama yang digunakan di notebook konvensional yang sudah lama kita gunakan. Salah satu hal yang berbeda adalah operating system yang dipakai. Di sini kami sudah menggunakan Chrome OS dari Google. Jadi apabila saya nyalakan, yang tampil adalah... Kita bisa lihat tadi salah satu poin yang sudah disampaikan Juli, seberapa cepat komputernya bisa menyala. Saya nggak menekan tombol apa-apa, saya buka langsung menyala. Dalam hitungan 8 detik, sudah langsung bisa masuk ke desktop. Beberapa poin yang ditawarkan oleh Chromebook adalah uh, pertama kecepatan, kecepatan itu antara lain seberapa cepat dalam memproses, berapa cepat bisa digunakan semenjak pertama kali kita nyalakan, uh, lalu simplicity, kemudahan, baik itu kemudahan untuk menggunakan atau kemudahan untuk meminit perangkat-perangkat yang ada di sekolah. Selain itu juga kita memberikan security, keamanan, baik data yang disimpan terhadap akses dari pihak ketiga atau data yang tersimpan terhadap kehilangan atau kerusakan. Itu semua diberikan oleh uh, Chromebook. Nah, kita, saya sudah contohkan, saya sudah kasih lihat dalam waktu 8 detik, semenjak saya buka layar, siswa sudah bisa menggunakan, siswa sudah bisa langsung login dan mengerjakan tugas di kelas. Lalu uh, perangkat ini juga bisa digunakan untuk berbagi pakai. Bila digunakan lebih dari satu siswa, mereka tidak akan bisa melihat data-data atau file milik siswa lainnya. Dan security yang ada di dalamnya memungkinkan Bila perangkat ini hilang atau rusak, kita ganti dengan perangkat baru, kita masih tetap bisa dapat mengakses data yang kita miliki sebelumnya. Karena semua data itu tersimpan di uh, Google Cloud. Okay. Uh, sebelumnya sudah ada yang pernah menggunakan atau sudah ada yang tahu mengenai produk Chromebook? Sudah ada yang pernah pakai? Belum pernah sama sekali? Ada yang sudah pernah pakai Chrome Browser? Sudah pernah pakai, oke. Okay. Ada yang sudah pernah pakai uh, smartphone Android? Oke, okay. apabila bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu sudah pernah menggunakan Chrome browser dan sudah menggunakan uh, Android, menggunakan Chromebook tidak akan berbeda jauh dari sisi interface ataupun dari sisi penggunaan. Karena interface-nya dibuat hampir sama dengan yang sudah biasa kita gunakan sehari-hari. Jadi apabila baru dipakai, kita sudah langsung familiar. Mulai dari menu-menunya maupun fitur-fiturnya. Selain daripada yang ada di hardware-nya, mulai dari OS-nya, 
kelebihan lain adalah untuk manajemen. Jadi uh, di services dari Google ini kami ada yang namanya uh, Chrome uh, Device Management. Dengan dengan menggunakan manajemen ini kita bisa mengkontrol perangkat yang dimiliki dari sekolah. Mulai dari siapa saja yang berhak menggunakan akses perangkatnya. port-port atau fitur-fitur dari hardware yang kita bisa berikan kepada siswa. Kita bisa matikan USB portnya, kita bisa matikan audio portnya. Jadi siswa tidak bisa memutar lagu atau tidak bisa memain game pada saat kegiatan belajar mengajar. Lalu kita juga bisa meminit aset, kita bisa tracking kapan terakhir digunakan, kita bisa tarik reportnya. Dan yang paling akhir untuk versi terbaru di Chrome OS itu kita sudah menggunakan sudah bisa menggunakan aplikasi Android. Jadi apabila di sekolah sudah ada konten yang berbasiskan aplikasi Android bisa langsung digunakan di Chromebook tanpa perlu menginstal aplikasi tambahan lain. Cukup diinstal dari Play Store sudah bisa langsung dipakai. Itu sangat membantu sekali. Nah, saya akan mendemokan salah satu beberapa penggunaan yang berhubungan dengan Google Suite. Tadi uh, Juli sudah mencontohkan di Google Suite itu kita bisa melakukan kolaborasi. Saya akan dibantu oleh Pak Ganis dan Mas Doni, bisa? Saya akan mengundang Pak Ganis dan Mas Doni dan juga Bapak-Bapak dan Ibu-Ibu untuk ikut berkolaborasi. Saya sudah membuat uh, sebuah dokumen di Google Drive. Saya akan tampilkan ke depan. Kita bisa mengedit secara bersama-sama. Ini uh, aksesnya saya buka, jadi cukup mengetikkan alamatnya di handphone atau di notebook. Sambil menunggu, Jolly, can we have your question, your quiz right now? We are setting up the, One, two, the collaboration. Two questions? Five. 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 Okay. okay. Five questions. Please. Okay, so as, as promised, uh, we have some swags and the laptop, which is the Chromebook, uh, to be awarded. And I would like to invite Andy from Doogie on the stage with the with the swags and I, I, my my questions are very very simple it's just based on the presentation which uh, I showed you right and it's a little bit of general knowledge as well okay and Ganes, uh from now on anyone who answers please write names uh, because uh, of 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 those people so that we can include them in the biggest 
Okay, okay. All right, so so the first question which I have, and, and there is no limit to answer the questions. You can ask, you can answer any number of questions. So a, a same person can answer 10, five questions which I'm asking, right? So the first question is, I'll, I'll say very slowly, what is the platform's name which Google uses for collaboration? Yes. Google Doc. Yeah. That's a partially right answer. Google Doc is actually a part of that platform. No, someone raised the Mr. hand Bear? already there. Mr. Bear, no? Already yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he is already there. <laughs> he Bear. was the second one. So name of the platform which Google uses for collaboration. Chrome. Right? Wrong. Sorry. No, Chrome is not the right answer. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming to you. Maybe G Suite for education. Superb, superb. She got the right answer. She got the right answer. Okay. Ibu dapat hadiah dulu dan ibu dapat kesempatan untuk memenangkan si Chrome Chromebook tadi. Jadi yang bisa jawab lima pertanyaan dari Jolly akan masuk ke babak berikutnya untuk memenangkan. Okay, apl applaud, applaud, applaud for okay, for her, please. Thank you. Ibu silakan kasih namanya ke Pak Garis. Next question. Okay, next question. Again, very simple. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so G Suite for Education is a platform which Google uses for collaboration. Can anyone name any five components of G Suite for Education? You already named Google Doc, right? So you have one, four more, five components of G Suite for education. Yes. Uh, Google PowerPoint, Google, Google presentation, yeah. Okay. Um, lima, lima, lima. Three more, two more. Uh, uh, three more. Three more. Participant? Okay, Bapak masih mau lanjut? Lupa, Pak. Oh, you Lupa raise your hand first. Just a minute. Lagi. Yes, Google it fast. Use your internet. Uh, Google Doc, Google Sheet, Google Hangout, Google Classroom, 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 Classroom. No. Yeah. Di recap bu, lima bu, ibu udah dapat kunci dari banyak tuh. Ibu, sebutkan lima. <laughs> Tadi kan udah bu. Ayo udah dijawab, tinggal menyimpulkan. Google Gmail, Calendar, Google Sheet, Google Doc, Google Hangout, Google Drive. Super, ibu berkerudung merah. Dan right answer. Untuk Andy, let let yeah, uh, this one, this one, yeah. Okay. Okay, you can just uh, take name, yeah, take the name please. Semoga lapernya hilang ya Bapak Ibu mohon maaf sekali masih ada tiga lagi please Jolly for three another questions Yes just three another questions Now this is this is this is very important you have to wear your thinking hat right I showed you Chromebooks right I showed you Chromebook laptop which you are going to get as an award Tony gave you some demo on Chromebook Can you how many differences two three can you give me any three ad <clears throat> advantages of Chromebook as compared to any other laptop in the industry? Three. Three advantages. Okay. He was the first one to actually... Yang belakang, mana yang belakang? Yeah. Laptop, laptop, laptop. Fast. Fast. Only a second. Okay. And then about the license. 
no no need only one at a time okay. and then uh, the simplicity yes terima kasih okay. bapak yes, okay very nice you can just take take down his name as well yes dua handphone bapak aduh dapat laptop juga nih okay now i'm coming to commercials i'm coming to pricing Two yeah more. what is the price for g suite for education what is the price for g suite for education she uh, raised her hand first what is the price of g suite of, for education yeah, um, sorry uh, because uh, google using uh, what uh, sustainability yeah cheap simple uh, so i think it's around 5 million okay ma'am answered 5 million that is not correct that is not correct i'm sorry okay yes oh, like he is so excited i think he knows the right answer karena sukanya gratis free price jadi gratis Yes, he is right. So Google yeah, for yeah, Google G Suite for education is absolutely free for universities and students. Google okay. does not charge anything for that. So very good. Good job. We'll find the last person. The last person and the last question. question. In G Suite for education, we have something which is called drive, which is storage. What is the limit of the storage of drive he was the first person who actually raised his hand i'm i'm so sorry it is unlimited so there is no limit to the storage very nice okay. sudah komplit 5 orang ini akan berkesempatan mendapat satu unit chromebook okay so can we can we uh, ganesh can we call all these winners Silakan on the stage please lima orang yang sudah menerima hadiah so you can come on the stage tadi yang tumbler enggak <laughs> Yang uh, no, beruang kutub enggak ya? Yang beruang kutub tadi. Siap. You no you 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 got your prize, but now for the grand prize, I would need all these five ya, and six people. Lima orang yang tadi sudah menjawab benar. Yang oh jadi tujuh pak? Oke okay, tujuh. Sorry sorry, berarti tujuh. Siapa aja Pak Ganis? Boleh saya bantu bacakan? Pak Karnadi, The Bearman, Pustekom. Kemudian Ibu Santi Arbi, LPMP Sulawesi Selatan. Yang ketiga Pak Febri dari LPMP. Kemudian Warawi. Beri tepuk tangan Bapak Ibu buat Bu Wara peserta dari LPMP yang Jogja. akan mendapatkan yang kesempatan. Yang kelima Endang Tri dari LPMP Bandung. Yang keenam Pak Didik Suhermat dari Prima Gama. Dan yang ketujuh Pak Ujang dari P4 TK Matematika. Oke, okay, kita berdoa bersama. <laughs> Tujuh orang yang akan mendapatkan Chromebook belum ada di pasaran kata Pak Ganis. Oke. Okay. Uh, Silakan pertanyaan dari Pak Tony. Ya, okay. Saya langsung. Oke. Okay. Tadi saya sudah menampilkan video introduction mengenai Chromebook. Tadi Jolie juga sudah menyampaikan beberapa keunggulan Chromebook dan tadi di quiz pun sebenarnya sudah ditanyakan ada tiga keunggulan Chromebook. Saat ini ada delapan keunggulan Chromebook yang membedakan antara Chromebook dengan notebook dan desktop konvensional. Tadi sudah disebutkan tiga, saya cuma minta tiga lagi. Kalau perhatikan videonya, seharusnya bisa jawab. Ada yang bisa bantu jawab? Mungkin diulang yang tadi sudah dijawab pada saat di quiz ya. Iya, diulang aja Ibu, nggak apa-apa. Diulang, ditambah tiga lagi. Tambah tiga lagi ya. Jadi yang pertama itu uh, apa? Kita bisa tracking kapan terakhir digunakan. Ya. Kemudian kita bisa mengunci atau mengontrol. Betul. Sehingga siswa tidak bisa memainkan uh, laptop, ya. apa mem memainkan musik atau nonton video pada saat pembelajaran. Betul. Dan satu lagi, apabila hilang dapat diinstal ulang. Terima Luar kasih. biasa. Aduh. Tambah ibu. yang tiga, tiga itu tiga. Sama. Persis Pak Tony. Persis, Pak. <laughs> Yang lain gimana nih Pak? Harusnya sudah betul. Punya kesempatan juga kah? Alhamdulillah. Uh, Masih tadi ditulis ya, tapi nggak apa-apa. Apabila jangan nyontek. Bisa ya. diulang lagi Bu? Ulang lagi. Jadi Bu. yang pertama kita dapat tracking hmm. atau melihat kapan terakhir notebook apa 
untuk manajemen. Uh, ya dapat digunakan. Betul. Yang kedua, kita dapat mengunci sehingga siswa tidak bisa bermain musik atau menonton yang lain saat pembelajaran. Uh -huh. Dan yang ketiga, apabila laptopnya hilang atau rusak bisa diinstalkan kembali. Terima Betul, kasih. itu tiga tambahan lainnya Ibu. Terima kasih. Maaf untuk bapak-bapak yang lain. <laughs> Karena Ibu. jawabannya sudah langsung dengan Ibu siapa? Maaf. Santi Arbi. Ibu Santi Arbi. Kita berdua tangan dulu untuk Ibu Santi Arbi. Ini aduh langka nih dapat begini. Harus terakhir makan siang Bu Santi. Terima kasih. Oh ini Bu Santi katanya terkenal ya Bu ya. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu yang lain tujuh uh, yang tadi ikut kesempatan. Close? Oke. Okay. Baik Bapak Ibu Joli, thank you for your presentation and for many kind of gifts that you bring to us. Ma Pak Tony, makasih banyak. Bapak Ibu yang terhormat, tanpa berpanjang kata, saya minta maaf atas segala kekurangan khususnya keterlambatan waktu. Augmented reality nanti akan Bapak Ibu uh, dapatkan di sesi-sesi berikutnya. Jadi Bapak Ibu bisa cek nama kelompok dan selamat makan siang. Mohon maaf atas segala kekurangan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam oh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, sebentar Ibu Bapak. Uh, Jolie, do you mind to come here first? We'll give you a plug souvenir and the one who give it is siapa Pak Indro? Terakhir. Pak Bambang. Pak Bambang Warsito.